Giselle and Robin. Giselle and Robin. And Wendy and Mia. Uh, Y'all, uh, let's go. What's the deal, y'all? This be your boy, Scott, about Nature TV, and we're here for another review of The Real Housewives of, of Potomac, Season 6, Episode 2. All right, I know this review was a little late. I got off work late last night, as you all know. I had to catch up on two videos. I had to catch up on The Circle. I had to catch up on Love and Marriage Huntsville. So I didn't really have any time to do Potomac last night. So I, I didn't even get to watch it last night. So I watched it this morning. Now, after I watched it, I got up, took a shower, put on put on some clothes, and then, you know, I'm doing my videos now. So, um, now that I got that out the way, um, I did watch my, um, uh, my brother, my bestie, um, uh, giving you the real tea video. I didn't, I didn't get to finish the whole thing. I watched it, well, I listened to it as I was showering, and then, um, and as I was ironing my clothes to get ready for my own video. So, I ain't finished it yet. I stopped when he was getting ready to talk about the games. But other than that, um... Let's get into it. So we're gonna get into where we, you know, we pick up where we left off last week with Karen and Giselle getting into it. Okay. Now they don't know what the hell Karen was talking about when she was talking about this sing sing stuff. And Karen started talking about the reason why, um, the reason why this whole situation between her and Giselle started was on the, I think, the first of the second season when um, Ray made that machauvinistic ass comment about how. She need to find a man now because beauty fades. And you those looks aren't going to last forever. You know, chauvinistic as fuck. And then um, Giselle said, Ray, Ray would be dead before this fades or whatever she said. And Karen took that as she was wishing death on Ray. I think that Karen is full of shit. And I think she's reaching. I, I as, as tacky as that comment was... I don't think that she was wishing death on Ray at all with that comment. I do think that she was, I think that the comment was unnecessary, but at the same time, you defending Ray for that chauvinistic ass comment that he fucking made, but yet you sit up here trying to, trying to reach and say, oh, Giselle wished death on my husband. Giselle never wished death on your husband, Karen. She didn't. She made a stupid ass remark in response to what your husband said, but she didn't wish death on your husband, okay? But here come Robin. You know, here comes Sister Soldier Robin. Well, why you didn't address it then? Why you didn't address it then? Robin, shut the fuck up. What does it have to do with you? Shut up. And this is why you get red every fucking time you get yourself involved with this shit with Giselle. You stay getting red. You stay getting toe out the frame every time because you don't know when to open and close your fucking mouth. Shut up. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Stop running your damn mouth. Like, period, you always trying to jump into some shit all the fucking time. You know, Mia talking about she gets she's a good judge of character and she sees that Giselle got a beautiful heart. How would you know that by sitting with somebody for five or ten minutes? You don't know what type of heart she got. I felt like that whole comment was unfucking necessary. I didn't feel like she should have said that anyway. I'm like, girl, bye. Like, what was the point of you even saying that? Okay, so you think that Giselle's cute, she's a beautiful woman? Yeah, she is a beautiful woman, of course. But, um, I'm just saying, at the end of the day, that's BS. Like, fuck all that, period. Like, what was the point of you even bringing that up? Then Wendy said that she feel like if this is a conversation between Karen and Giselle, it should be between Karen and Giselle. And it shouldn't be a gang up. And then Robin said it's not ganging up. Yes, the fuck it is. That's all y'all ever do for each other is gang up on the next bitch because you feel like you got to defend your girlfriend's honor. That's all you ever do. And then every time you defend your girlfriend's honor, what happens to you? You get shaded like a motherfucker every time. This is why you need to learn to mind your own fucking business. Worry about your own dry ass marriage and dry ass storyline and dry ass hairdos and dry ass clothes, dry ass house. Worry about your own shit. Why are you always stepping in for fucking Giselle all the time? Giselle don't need your fucking help. A lot of this time when she get fucking red, it's because she earned that fucking read. Stop, girl. Let me hush. Like, like straight up. But another thing about Karen is this right here. Stop using the fact that somebody ain't got no man as a goddamn insult. I ain't got no man. 
So does that make me less of a person because I ain't got no man? Like, let's not use having a man or having a husband or whatever as a way to take a dig at somebody. You know what I mean? Because I didn't like that shit when Kristen did it to OG that very first season. I got a husband. And then when OG came back with, where is he? And then she was like, at home with my baby. And then OJ, OG was like, really? And then you felt like she was trying to insinuate something about your husband. But no, she wasn't insinuating nothing about your husband. You were trying to be shady because you got a husband. And she ain't got no husband. And you tried to use that as a dig. But she used your dig against you as, a, as the same type of dig. And you couldn't take it. Y'all got to stop using um, y'all men as a weapon against people. Just because you got a man don't mean a goddamn thing. Anybody can have a man if they are fool enough to have one. Anybody can have a goddamn man. I'm just saying. Anybody can have a man. Anybody can. Just because you ain't, just because we ain't got no men don't mean we can't get a man. Let's just make that clear. A lot of people love to use. That's why you can't keep a man. That's why maybe it's not about keeping a man. Maybe it's about not standing for some bullshit. But Robin... Girl, just shut the fuck up. Stop speaking on folks shit. That's all I got to say. But Wendy started questioning um, Mia's loyalty to Karen. My thing about this is if you're coming in as a friend of Karen's, I do think that I'm not saying you can't like Giselle. But that whole, I think that she has a beautiful heart. Where did that even come from? You could have kept that shit to your damn self. I'm just Speaking my mind, speaking the truth, she could have kept this shit to herself. I don't know what the why the fuck she felt like she needed to say that. So we get into Mia. Okay, um, she got a couple of businesses. Um, she got three kids. Um, she got two by her husband, and her oldest son is by a previous relationship or whatever. They got this. They got a house in um, I think North Carolina, and they got a house outside of Baltimore. They um, they can see the 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 the, the water and all this other stuff. I'm like, well, go ahead then, Mia. Go ahead, go ahead. She trying to cook. Do business and look after the kids all at the same time. But G feel like she doing too much and she shouldn't be trying to do all this shit at the same time. Men love to tell a woman what they need to be doing. Like, just let her do her and let her do what she got to do. That's all I'm saying on the situation. Um, so, after we get into Mia, we get into Candace. Um, Candace is shooting a pilot, I believe. Um, as far as I know, I have not watched anything that she's been on i'm just keeping it real i haven't i do know that she was on the family reunion i think that's some show on netflix um i think kenya was on it i think um tia mari was on that show too and i know that candace was on that and i think she did like this christmas movie for bet or some shit like that so you know i ain't never watched none of her stuff but from what i hear she's a good actress you know but you know that's it on that um so she was shooting the pilot and then you know Chris is now her husbander. She don't have no real manager. Her husband is her manager. Now, all I'm saying is this. I'm really um, not too keen on my man being my manager because we already know how this shit turns out. Look at Monique. And just like Terrence said, look at how the shit happened with Monique and look at what her career is. Look at, hell, look at Mary J. fucking Blige, okay? Kendu Isaacs was her husband. He was her everything and he was her manager. And after they fell out and they got a divorce, she had to pay him fucking alimony. It's never, it's never always a good thing to have your man as your husband because greed can come into play. They can feel like they need more than, it's a lot. So just watch that shit. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to put no bad juju on your situation. I'm just saying watch the fuck out on what you do. Make sure this is the right thing for you. Now Robin comes over to Giselle's house and Giselle shows her her West Wing. It looks a, 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 a basic ass mess. It looks like a damn barn from the outside. But on the inside it looks pretty decent. So then they discuss Jam Jamal. I was about to call that man Jamar. Sorry best friend. They discuss Jamal. And um they were talking about um how this relationship has not been working due to the pandemic and robin was like well what if the pandemic um ends tomorrow and giselle said that's the whole point it's not gonna end tomorrow the fact of the matter is giselle he don't want you that's really what this is he don't want you he keeps showing that he don't want you it's been out there that he got other women like girl you already know this why are we sitting up here still talking about jamal you know that man don't want you and you probably don't even want his ass either you just wanted him to keep yourself a storyline on this show that's really what this is like girl bye like stop it like at the end of the day 
Jamal don't fucking want you. I don't even know why the fuck you back with him anyway. He done got all these cheering on you and all this other shit. Do your kids even know they brothers and sisters? I'm just asking. Jamal don't fucking want you. And you know he don't fucking want you. It doesn't matter if you in a pandemic. If you in a pandemic and you trying to get involved with somebody, you're going to take that step to be with that person. You can still fly to go see somebody. Take the proper precautions. That's all you got to do. Period. That's all I'm saying. Like, girl, bye. So then they call Candace. They talk about Wendy's body work. Then they discuss Mia. Then they discuss everything that happened with Karen and Giselle and all of this other stuff. And, um, <coughs> you know, they get into all of that. Then after they get done talking to Candace, um, they start talking about Karen and Ray. Now, um, you know, they start saying how Karen can't buy no house because she got tax problems and stuff like that. All this money that she owes for taxes and Robinson up here, amen, and the shit. Like, she did not just have no tax problems of her fucking own just last season. Are you really gonna sit up here and act like you did not have no tax problems of your fucking own? And when you were having tax problems of your fucking own, you was mad with Ashley because she was talking about the tax problems of your fucking own. But you sitting up here with Giselle talking about tax problems. Giselle, shut the fuck up. Because your best friend right here is the queen of having tax problems. And you were trying to condemn somebody else for having it. Girl, bye. Shut up. I can't stand Giselle, y'all. That's one person I... Mm -mm, can't, I can't stand that bitch. So Karen and Ray, they were talking about what happened at the, um, the titty party. And um, she starts talking about Karen's issues with Giselle. And uh, Karen was like, she just feels like she's mad about what happened with Jamal. And how Jamal really ain't her man like that. And that's the problem because she doesn't have a man and all this other stuff. Let's not keep talking about this. She ain't got a man and shit. Like, for real. So, she said um, she wants to have a love party. She's going to invite all the women to the party. And, um, you know, it's going to be a good time. So, um, when does Mama want a boob job? And she wants Winnie and Eddie to pay for it. Okay. Wendy wants to start her own home essential line. She feels like being a professor is really not fulfilling for her. And um, it's not something that she's actually passionate about. But however, at the end of the day, um, she wants to start this home essential line. Um, Eddie feels like she's not taking it seriously as she's supposed to. And this is this is why he doesn't necessarily believe in it. Um, the way that he the way that um the way that um, she would like him to. So she gets to take it seriously before he decides to take it seriously. I agree. So Karen and Ashley. Karen is over at Ashley's house and she invites her to the love party. And I'm just looking at Karen and Ashley sitting in the scene together. And sometimes I'm very perplexed to see them in the scene together. After all that shit they went through, they are chummy like that. Okay. You know, Ashley said that she's going to go to the party. Um, they discussed Karen's fight with Giselle and you know... Karen said that she invited Giselle to the party and it's up to Giselle on whether she wants to come. Giselle throws the shit in the trash. Robin and Juan said they ain't going. Don't nobody give a fuck. Don't nobody care about Giselle not going. We don't need her negative energy and she ain't going because Jamal wasn't going to be there no way. And Robin and Juan ain't going because Juan don't want Robin and he wants and, and he don't want the world to know that he really ain't trying to marry her. That's why they ain't going. Like, y'all sitting up here making this scene about... I ain't going, I ain't going. Girl, nobody cares about y'all not going to that party. I really want y'all to know that y'all presents are not needed. We don't need you there, period. So, Giselle sitting down with her daughters, and all I'm going to say about this scene is this right here. They was reading her ass yet again. They stay reading Giselle, but Giselle deserves it. Giselle needs to be read. Her children got way more sense than, than she fucking do. That's just, honestly. She's trying to tell them who the fuck they, they need to be dating, but... They looking at her like, girl, you can't tell us who the fuck we can date. Look at you and look at your situation. You, Who are you to tell me who I'm supposed to be dating? I'm just saying. So now the love party starts. G and Mia meets, meets May. Uh, not May. She said meets Ray. I'm saying if Karen and Mia are friends, how... Okay. Whatever. So, um, Wendy, Eddie, and Ashley, they arrive. They meet G. Candace arrives. Now... I did skip over this scene, so let me talk about it. Candace is, um, her, I guess her anxiety is up. She doesn't really know where her and Karen really stand right now. Um, she still feels the way about Karen in regards to what happened last season, in regards to the fight between her and Monique, which, you know, she's has her rights to talk about that fight whenever she sees fit. Um, I personally don't want to discuss it because, Jesus, that was, yeah. But, however, I will say that I think that it goes a little bit beyond this fight that happened with Monique and herself. I think um, 
yes, she was upset with Karen. She felt as though Karen wasn't taking um wasn't taking her pain seriously, although I disagree with that. But at the same time, it goes more so into the whole going to HR on Candace when she told her to burn in hell eternally and all this other stuff. I think it's many layers to this whole situation between Karen and Candace and I think all of it has to be discussed before they can properly move on. But even if they do properly move on, the relationship will probably never be the same because Candace will always look at Karen as a fake, as a fraud and she'll feel like if I say or do anything, she's going to go to HR and try to get my job snatched from under my shoulders. I'm just telling y'all. That's the and it, this ain't even me trying to because you know all last season I was accused of being team Monique I was even accused of being paid by fucking Monique when I ain't never had no conversation with this lady a day in my damn life but then it's like towards the end I sympathized with Ken's emotional state and then I got accused of oh you switching sides because team Candace was dragging you it's like you you I mean it's like I held them both accountable for the fight. I'm Team Monique. I'm sympathizing with Candace and why she didn't accept Monique's apology. Now I'm Team Candace. And now I'm switching sides because of a because this staying group was attacking me all season. It's like it is like you can't win for losing when it comes down to, to housewives, you know. But this ain't this is a new new time, new season, so whatever. But that's just what it is. I do think that it's way more to this situation than you didn't take my side with the can with the Monique fight. It's you didn't take my side. Um, and you went to HR on me, um, for calling, for telling you to go to hell, you know, because you feel threatened, you know, whatever. So I think it's a lot more to that, but, you know, Candace invites her to her house, um, and they're going to talk about their situation. Hopefully they talk about it and get past it all. But like I said, it'll never be the same. It will, it, their relationship will probably always be surfaced. It's, it's like a candy and Porsche type of thing. It'll never be the same. Never. Now, Mia don't know her age. She had to look at her ID to find out how old she was. Mia, I can't with you. I can't. I don't, I, like, I can't with her. Like, I want to like Mia, but it's, apart from her body and all that shit being fake, she comes across as a fake motherfucker. I'm just saying. But I'll be, i stand corrected at some point. So Mia... When they, would start, when they start talking about the whole Karen and Giselle stuff, um, Mia started saying that, you know, you know, Karen is a real boss. And then Wendy called Mia out on it. And then, you know, she was saying, but she was just saying that she had an incredible heart and you asked her for her number and stuff. And then she was like, well, at that time, that's how I felt. No, you didn't fucking know her to say she had incredible anything. That's the point that Wendy is making. You didn't even know her like that, but she got an incredible heart. Now that... You hear this shit. Now it's, well, you know, I, I don't see her like that no more because of what she said about Ray. No, you shouldn't have said shit because you don't fucking know her to say nothing. Like, period. Like, girl, listen, Wendy had every right to question her. And it's just, it is what it is. Talking about she thought that she was softening the blow by asking her for her phone number. No, you wasn't softening shit. You wasn't softening anything. Period. Like, Mia, girl... Bye. But, Wendy, I do feel like you don't like Mia and you didn't like her from the start. Okay? So, I feel like you're really coming at Mia and you thought that she was going to read Mia and do all this other shit, but Mia came back for your ass. Okay? So, this is the clash of the titans between Wendy and Mia. And I ain't team nobody, but I'm just telling you what it is. Mia seemed coming across real fucking phony to me, and I'm just being real on that. Um, then they start playing these fun ass games and you know, it's funny to hear about their sex life. It's funny to hear about all this crazy stuff that they've done as couples. It was a it was a cute game. Um Ashley made a great host and all this other stuff. But what was real funny to me is that um Ray and Karen they was saying about who 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 would they feel like their man would be attracted to and Karen said uh, Mia but Ray said Katie and Katie not even a group no more and I thought that was hilarious because Katie is Katie was um a beautiful woman I always thought she was even when she had them fucked up ass wigs I thought she was a beautiful woman but yeah um but Eddie you know he said nobody Wendy controlling that shit he probably was gonna say Mia but Okay, <clears throat> so with that being said, you guys, um, this is my review of The Housewives of Potomac. Feel free to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video.
Get me an algorithm, gal. Give me an algorithm, okay? Um, if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter and my IG is available. It's, it's public, okay? It's not private at all. It's public. Um, so, it'll be in the description box. Um, um, and that's it. Um, later on tonight, um, I'll be doing my Love and Hip Hop Atlanta review if I can get through it, y'all. Of course, it'll be released tomorrow. It'll be a premiere tomorrow um, at noon. 11 a.m. Central Time. Be sure to be on the lookout for the whether you like it or not Potomac panel tonight. Um, it involves myself giving you the real tea, Simply Sakina, Really BTV, and Yacrates. Josiah won't be able to um, participate tonight. So one of our um, first guest panelists will be Chocolate Beauty 81. She'll be sitting in for Josiah this week. And as you guys already know, we will have the same guests <clears throat> throughout the season. Um, Chocolate Beauty 81 is one. The Brick Ashley is another. Alex is another. And um, my cousin Reggie is another one. He would have been the first guest, but he's in Puerto Rico right now. So um, Chocolate Beauty will be sitting in for Josiah. So you'll have um, three versus three. You know, you'll have the men. You'll have um, an even amount of men, even amount of women this week. Okay, so that's it. I'll holler at y'all later. Peace out. We can always find our way to a fun moment, even in the shady bunch. We can always find our way to a fun moment, even in the shady bunch.